yo, what is up, my crazy sports maniacs? And welcome to another awesome Saturday edition of All Sports Media Team Presents Double Dribble. This is episode number 29. Dynamite comes in small packages. That's why we got Tyo Cruz playing in the background. Thank you, Tyo Cruz, for that. Um, and today we bring in a person who is literally just that. Um, she may be small in stature, but she's fast. She's got a killer crossover. She's got game. There's no other way to put it. She's got game. Talking about Miss KK Gets Buckets herself, Kaylin Brown. What's up, Kaylin? Thank you for joining us. What's up, Ricky? Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate the time. My name is Kaylin Brown, known as KK Gets Buckets or KB. And I'm from Los Angeles, and I'm just very thankful and blessed to be on your show. I've been playing since I was three, and I just love the game. I'm always working hard, dedicated, working out with my trainers. You know, growing up, a lot of people really didn't understand my focus because I wasn't really the one to hang out. I was always about either in the gym, working out, getting shots up, working on my jumper, working on my handle. I just, I really love Kobe and his work ethic. So that just made me, you know, get started. And I just love basketball ever since. Cool, cool. So Kobe is your your main was he like your main mentor growing up? I mean, we got our boys down here, Gilbert, my A plus Essential is back. Welcome back, Gilbert. And we got yeah. our George. They both love Kobe as well. We've done a lot of Kobe stories. What's going um, on? What's going on? Yeah, so you jump right into Kobe. Um, has he been your mentor ever since you were young? I mean, you're still pretty young yourself. Um, but what has he yeah. always been your your main guy? Yeah, Kobe's always been my main guy. I mean, I have Kobe's books, his Mamba mentality book posters in my room. I just loved his work ethic and just just his mentality of winning. Like, he always made sure he outworked others. And that's why I can't really rely on my talent because that's why like, I, ever since a kid, I was like, it's always about work ethic because, like, your skills can only get you that far, you know. And if you have that good work ethic and if you, you know, listen and take people's advice and just work on your game, you can always be better, you know. You can be a good shooter. You can be a good ball. You can always work on your game. That's why, in my opinion, Kobe was the greatest Laker of all time. There you go. And that, that can work in life, too, not just in sports. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right, right, right. Because he said. was a great father, great mentor. And I'm actually at a community event right now for Rashonda Gray. Shout out to Rashonda Gray. Mm -hmm. She plays on the L.A. Sparks. She Shout played for Sparks. New York, Atlanta a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we're actually doing a community food, toy, and clothing drive right now in Inglewood at Central Baptist Church. So, you know, I'm just trying to get my community service going just to build my resume Absolutely. just a little bit. That's awesome. And we respect nice. a lot of people for doing that. Nice, nice. We did, we did a, a pillow drive a little while back out in Oxford <clears> and then uh, LA. And then it was, it was interesting. We literally went into the trenches. It was, it was interesting. Something I'll never forget, but charity, there's nothing like charity. I mean, honestly, no matter right, what. Right, right. It's nothing. always good to give back to the kids. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, especially around this time. Oh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Especially during this holiday the season. So before we jump into <laughs> You being as the awesome, charitable, killer, crossover baller that you are, give, give us a little BG. Give us a little bit of background. Who's Kalen Brown? Where'd you come from? What made you want to play ball? And where are you at now? So I'm actually, um, like I said, from Los Angeles, California. I didn't really grow up going to, you know, a top high school or, you know, a top AU team. So I have to work, you know, for what I, what I want. And I know I want to get to the top. I want to go to the WNBA. And I know... I know I can get there with my work ethic, just keep getting more exposure. I feel like if I went to a different high school, you know, I would have probably, it would have been a lot easier as opposed to like more looks because I didn't get much exposure growing up. So I feel like if I went to a modern day or if I went to like mm -hmm. a more known school, you know, I would have had a lot more offers. But I mean, I had looks from USC, Colorado, Denver, different schools. But mm -hmm. I just always worked on, you know, just staying in the gym, working out, having that good work ethic because I wasn't really the hype player in high school, the top player from ESPN or all that. But like, in my opinion, that doesn't really matter because, you know, like Steph Curry went to Davidson. So mm -hmm. it's like if you don't have to go to a big time school, there's a lot of great players and good oh, yeah. players. I came from D2s and lower D1s, and they still made it to the pro NBA, WNBA. So I just feel like it's always about outworking. So freshman year, I started at St. Bernard. You know, they were a really top school, but then things happened. You know, everybody transferred. So I, I kind of wanted to play, you know, it was a known school. I wanted to play with Cheyenne Butler, you know, a lot of the top schools in high school, Ajane Drummer. Mm -hmm. So I started there, and then the coach actually left St. Bernard 
and he ended up going to Losinger. So he was like, come on with me, you know. So we tried Losinger, you know. My second year there, my junior year, we had a really good season. But, you know, like I said, they weren't a known school. So I ended up going to Fairfax, and we won the city championship. And they were, you know, I wanted to win a championship. I was, I worked so hard, and I needed to get a championship. So I actually went to Fairfax. We beat Palisades. Palisades won two years back to back. My friend Chelsea Gibson, who I grew up with, went to Winward, and now she's at LMU. So it's like, even in seventh grade, me and Chelsea Gibson, we always battled, you know. So seventh grade at Crossroads, we ended up playing Winward and beating them in the championship. Then my senior year, I finally got another championship. So I feel like that was a really historical moment. And I hit the three. There was 10 seconds left. The clock was going down, and we needed a three to tie the game. So they gave me the ball. I knocked it down. And coach was like where do you want it because he was like I know he was like I believe in you you work on these shots every day after practice before I'm always in the gym just getting reps up so he gave it to me and I knocked down that shot and I feel like that was really like special to me because that was a big moment I you feel like, like in high school yeah you sound like you lived a lot I mean you're still young but you sound like you lived a lot of experience on the court um what was your most exciting moment you just talked about a couple championships what was the most exciting moment for you career-wise so far in basketball? Um, I would say scoring 25 points off the bench. I feel like that was a really great game in JUCO, 25 off the bench. I don't remember my percentage. I think it was six for eight from the three, but I'm not, you know, 100%. But it was a really high percentage. I really take pride in my shot selection. Like, as a player, I want high percentages. So I'm always looking to increase my percentages, you know, because I'm not – like you got to be a shot maker. I'm not a, I make sure I have a good shot selection, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's like in my game, I want to make sure my percentages are high. So that's just my style of play. And then also on my trainers, I really, you know, I really appreciate all of my trainers, Jeff Johnson, who trained Jordan Canada. He's my speed and strength trainer. He's always pushing me to get better because I'm working on my speed and explosiveness right now. So mm -hmm. I do a lot of hill work. And I'm meaning to go down to the sand dunes because I got to go to the dunes. Some of them. And also DeVille, DeVille Ross. Uh, my other trainer, Kenny Wright from Long Beach. Uh, sick with it. I don't know if you know the animal and ball up, street ball legend. Sick. We always get in the gym. Sick with mm -hmm. it. Yeah, he's working on my handle and my jumper. So, And also Victor Purnell is another trainer in high school who's worked with me just getting stronger and working on my game as well. So I just really appreciate the trainers who believe in my talent and work at it. And, you know, some trainers are about the money. So. You know, they really care about me as a person. So, and they know I can get to the next level because all the coaches, you know, that overlook me, I just go twice and three times mm -hmm. as hard. So I'm not going to let anybody stop me from getting to the top. Absolutely. We've had that with a lot of players that we've interviewed. It's been that situation where either a coach or teacher or parents or someone didn't believe in them. And they, they pushed that extra <laughs> Josiah with the, the one coach that just consistently threw him down, stuff like that. Um. You talk about your cool training methods. I noticed going through, you know, some of your social media and I noticed some of your highlight videos that we had, you had two really cool training styles that you have. There was one where you're actually in, I don't know if it's like a full gym with like nets on the side and you like, you shoot a ball and it goes in the machine, shoots the ball back at, at you and you were just- Yeah, yeah, that's a three. shoot that 360. Dope. Yeah, shoot 360. It's actually a great gym. They also have some ball handling stations. I think I sent you a little ball handling stations. So they have different combo moves. You can, you know, it's like touch screens virtual. So everything, cool. the trainer's on the screen and then the shooting gun, it, it tracks your arc and your depth. So, you know, okay. the arc is supposed to be 45 to 47. So, you know, if you come sometime, I can show you. If your arc is consistently in the 45, 47 range, you're good. Because Steph Curry and Clay is in the 47 range. Mm -hmm. So, I always, every time, I have to start going more consistent because I want to get my percentages higher and higher. Because, you know, like I said, the, the better you shoot and the better you play, you work on your all-around game, you know, the better you are as a player. So, the only thing is, of course, it's far so you know ubering to gyms and it costs <laughs> yeah. money but that's what it hey that's what it takes to be great so if i'm ubering mm -hmm. you know both ways you know three days four days a week that's what that's what it takes to be mm -hmm. great and get to the top that's what i gotta do yeah i was actually there last night she put me on game on that yeah so. shout out to george man he yeah he was at shoot 360 get it in too mm -hmm. so last night yeah so it was pretty dope but you know it was it was a very tough workout but i actually got through it <laughs> it looks so. like it but it, it looks really it's different for someone who's never seen something like that i mean see i've seen like i'm a baseball player so i've seen like the, the pitch back where you throw the ball hits the net comes back you do something like that 
course, the batting cages, you know, stuff like that. But at basketball, I've never seen anything like that. And I thought that was super, super cool. And the fact that you can work on just the certain techniques that you want to work on. And you were working on your jumpers, you know, and you have a killer jumper, by the way, um, which I really, Thank really you enjoyed. so much. Yeah, she kills it from behind the, the first arc. time doing it. Yeah, I, I yeah, yeah. it's all it's all about the it's all about the reps, you know, because yeah. I I would say in high school I was a good shooter, but over the years, like my consistently like my consistency actually went up, you know, percentages wise because I just got it's all about the reps. You always just just keep shooting. It's muscle memory. So the more reps you get mm-hmm. our game speed and the higher your percentages are. Mm-hmm. I also noticed that no matter what angle you're shooting from, whether it's left or right, and I believe you're a southpaw. Um, you do the exact same technique every single time. Like, if you guys can check out her yeah, highlight same video form, on YouTube. Same form. Yep, exactly. Check out our YouTube, youtube.com, um, all sports media team. You can see George's awesome videos that we posted of KK, Caitlin Brown. Uh, really cool highlights of how she was just, I'm telling you, behind the art, she's ridiculous. You know, I'm talking Reggie Miller status here, okay? It was awesome. One other training <laughs> method that I noticed, I believe this was you. If it wasn't, please correct me. Um, you do, be- do you do beach training also? I, uh, yes, yes, I do a lot of beach work. Um, I do some beach workouts with Earl Ramsey, but he actually moved to Arizona. So we did a lot of beach work consistently. So I, now I'm back in town, actually, for probably another month. They keep pushing our season back, even though most of the schools are playing. But, you know, I can only control what I can control. So mm-hmm. I'm actually thinking about doing a lot more beach workouts and sand dune workouts while okay. I'm here so I can really get my speed and you know that explosiveness because actually speed house with jeff johnson is a really good speed facility which has resistant machines so we do a lot of leg work hamstring too. work very max we do a lot of stuff so i go three days a week there so i feel like if i just consistently you know just consistently do my speed and work on my handle shooting and just just work on my game and just getting that exposure so whenever i'm at runs or hooping just getting mm-hmm. that video footage is really important i feel like that will really, you know, just get my name out there even more, just the mm-hmm. exposure aspect of it. Because, you know, that's really big. Uh, if you don't have someone videotaping or if you don't have, if you're not around the right people, positive people who are going to push for you or vouch for you, if you're not around the right trainers and the right camera mm-hmm. at the right time, you know, it's hard to do it yourself. So that's why absolutely. it's really good to be around positive people. Facts, facts. Absolutely. million percent. Absolutely. Um, a lot of people who are viewing this or are going to be viewing this later um, don't know what beach training is. If they haven't seen your video on your Instagram um, at underscore KK gets buckets, check it out. Um, you can see her actual beach training. Can you explain what you do in your beach training or is there like different methods for different types? It's of- actually, it's, uh, it varies. Uh, so my beach workouts will consist of defensive slides, closeouts, box mm-hmm. drills, just uh, like hurdle, speed ladder, just different footwork drill and agility drill. So we do a lot of like slides and closeouts and jumps to work on agility. Mm-hmm. Just so, of course, there's both sides of the floor. So, you know, James Harden, he's one of my favorite players, but it's both sides of the floor. Like you can't just be a great scorer <laughs> offense, but you got to play defense, you know, especially mm-hmm. at the next level. Like You got to be able to play both sides. So th- I feel like the speed and the lateral quickness of agility really helps me with more athletic and faster players, especially when I'm playing pickup against you know grown men or older women like when I've been going you can tell they're a lot stronger and faster so I have to rely more on my IQ Mm -hmm. and skill set as opposed to that so that's why I'm working much on like just speed and athleticism power just just certain aspects just so I can get to the top so I can get to the next level Mm-hmm. And people know, like, just walking in the sand is hard enough, let alone having to run in it and yeah. slide in it and do all. I've seen your videos. That does not look easy. So much shout out to you for that. Yeah, it's tough. It's not easy. Yeah, it's a lot harder than it looks. But it's worth it. It's worth it when you get on the court. So when you signed in today, you told me to put a U St. Mary combo guard. So you're obviously, you play both guard positions. Um, are you at St. Mary yeah, right now? Yeah, I play now? point and two guard. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually at University of St. Mary first year, so just getting ready to play. It's been about a year going on two years because I took last year off to just train and work out, to save okay. my eligibility. So a lot of schools are playing right now. So I'm like, in my head, I'm, I'm frustrated. It's been two years, haven't played a college game. I mean, I've been training, you know, going to runs and it's like all the schools are playing in our conference but us. But, you know, like I said, just stay positive and keep grinding and working on my game. So as soon as I go out, I just got another month to just jump and outwork everybody to accomplish all the goals I have this season that I want to get accomplished. That's awesome. 
Did you go to any other universities or city colleges before this? Uh, I went to Long Beach City College. I went to Long Beach for a year, and then I went to LA Trade Tech for a year, and then now I'm at University of St. Mary. Oh, cool. LA Trade Tech. That's where uh, Mark went, I believe. One of our our guys, P3, Mark uh, Anthony Chin. Cool. Mark Anthony oh, yeah. Chin. Mark. Mark Anthony Chin, yeah, yeah. big gamer. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, that okay, so. Yeah, so do you have any maybe accomplishments or achievements in your high school slash college career that we should know of besides the championships, like an MVP or player of the year or anything like that? Yeah, my fresh, uh, freshman year, I was co-MVP freshman nice. year at St. Bernard. I was co-MVP uh, junior year. I got I got several player of the weeks and um, honorable mentions, first team conference and now I'm just now I gotta get first team and all American leading the score. I have a lot of goals I want to accomplish this year, so I'm just ready to play a game since it's been two years. But I'm ready to uh, all American, first team all conference, all of those accolades that I know I deserve and I know I can get. That's what I'm going for this season. Well, we can't wait to see it when it happens because it's gonna happen with the determination that you have and the drive that you have and mm-hmm. the workouts that you do. It, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Um, you've also done. Thank you so much. Hey, absolutely. You've also done. Um, I don't know. If there, are, George could probably explain this to me better. Um, they're not really rec leagues, but they're more like city leagues. Like uh, you've done basketball beauties and X versus X, correct? So, can you tell us about those? Correct. Yes, yes, sir. So, man, so X X V X with Metro Peace. Those runs are great, fun, positive environment. I actually have runs actually tonight from seven to nine, and then one to three in Compton. So. I just, the positive environment, working on my game, and Meta really enjoyed my game. So he's like, when are you going to be back, KK? And I'm like, I'll be back soon because I haven't been. So it's just the thing is it's far, but I told him I'll be there tonight. So Let me know. I, I want to make I told him tonight. Piece. Yeah, George, George <laughs> I told wants him. to go fangirl. Exactly. <laughs> KK knows. And and he was then, like, everybody uh, knows yeah. Meadow. Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah, so just and then um the beauties I've played in love just to get more exposure. I really use those really to work on my game and work on my craft just to get more exposure. So just while I'm out here, so when I get back to school, I'll be ready to just kill and dominate, you know, because mm-hmm. I'm the youngest girl at the beauties in XX. I'm pretty That's much awesome. everybody's out of college. So yeah, I'm the only one in college still. So playing against older people with a high IQ, I mm-hmm. feel like when me studying the game more. My my friend actually Ty and oh they actually said watch Manu Ginobili so I've been really studying Manu and I'm a lefty like Manu yeah, yeah, so like so like Manu Ginobili is cold and people really don't really talk about Manu so that's why I like the underrated I like Steph I like Dame Lillard yeah I even like Luka Doncic so I like players like that he's underrated you know? I think Doncic nice. yeah. very underrated and but as soon as Luka put up the numbers now everyone's you know starting to talk about him Absolutely. they're giving him respect. <clears throat> absolutely you just talked about being intellectual and you know using your mind i also know for a fact that you like either like chess or you're a chess player is that true and if so how did you get into that yeah i actually play chess i love chess um i actually was in chess clubs since first grade elementary cool. school i just played ever since so i mean it's a strategy game, you know, strategic. So you got to think one, two plays ahead, just like on the court. So I feel like chess is very important. A lot of people don't play it, but I'm going to start playing it, you know, consistently and just to, you know, work on thinking two, three plays ahead, you know. Wow. So I feel like chess is a really good game, you know, just to get you thinking. Well, you just AKB, I wanted, I wanted to get in real quick and um, ask a few questions. Um, just, just off the bat, I could already tell that, like, on the court, you you could you could envision what's going to happen. With with that being said, um, I see that you were in a uh, is that a Lakers sweater? Where is she? Oh, so, it's a Sparks. LA a Sparks. Sparks. Hey, well, yeah. um, with that being said, like I don't know if you saw Rondo playing in the bubble last last or oh, this year, but the way he approaches a point guard position and the way he car- um carries himself as a general on the floor, do you, do you see some some similar to some Similar game between you and him? Um, Not really as much Rondo. A lot of people will say James Harden just because my step back and I'm a lefty. So a lot of people will say like – and then that a few people tell me Kyrie because I have handles as well. So 
I hear more like Kyrie, James Harden. Those are like the type of players I like playing like. And then of course Steph. I, I shoot deep, but I don't shoot as deep as Steph. But just <laughs> I love Curry. I love Curry's IQ. He could pass. He could handle it. You know, he can get to the room. You know, he could shoot from deep. I, so I would say mostly, I'll say, I'll say Kyrie, James Harden. Not so much Rondo. I always hear more James Harden, Kyrie. Nice, nice. There you go. So with that said, do you? Who out of all those names, who do you think you model your game after the most? Like, I mean, I would say I like uh, Harden, but you know me, it's like as I got older, like Harden's a great player, a great scorer, but the only thing is like he's selfish. So, like dribble, sometimes dribble, dribble, like dribble, two, three dribble. guys, yeah, yeah, and if, if two, <laughs> but if two, but if two, I mean, he's a great player, and if two, three guys are on him though. He's not going to give it up. He's not going to make the extra pass, the right play. He's going to force a shot, which is the only thing. But I also like Chris Paul and Dame Lillard. I've been watching a lot of Dame recently mm-hmm. and Chris Paul. I like Chris Paul. You know, Chris Paul, he could score. He could pass. But a lot of people say, you know, he's going to know it. But I'll say more like Chris Paul and more like Dame Lillard, you know. But also Harden, since I'm a lefty, but I'm trying to start – watching more Ginobili, so to play more about Ginobili. a little bit of lever- – a little bit of, you know, different players, take bits and pieces from different players. Absolutely. Well, that's awesome. That's the best way to do it. Be like, okay, I'm going to do this kind of shot because of this person. I'm going to use this mindset because of this person. You know, that, and that since person. I'm a shooter as well, mm-hmm. and I do step backs and side steps, I learn it from Harden. He's a lefty, so my side steps and step backs are similar to Harden. So that's – and, like, I like coming down. Oh, and then women as well, like, you know, because uh, female, of course. So I'll say women players, I'll say more like Asia Dirt. She okay. played for Louis. I like Asia Dirt's game. I like Maya Moore, Maya. Tarasi. Tarasi, I love Tarasi, you know. Yeah, she she's, just signed she's, her she, 17th. She's a legend. She just signed for her Yeah, she's years. a GOAT. <laughs> yeah, she's so, yeah, so I'll say watch a few more, you know, women players. I actually really like what I, I can't believe I forgot her name or didn't even mention her. I mean, Sabrina Inescu. Sabrina, Sabrina's great. She's back too. Sabrina's she's great. Number yeah. one pick. She's back. The former number one pick. Yeah, she was, she so, was yeah, training probably, today. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and so a lot of them are training at Sports Academy, Kobe's facility, mm-hmm. so I, like, I got to get in the gym with some WNBA players because I actually trained with Phil Handy, the Lakers coach, but, you know, he's uh-huh. so busy now. He's back in season. So I'm trying to get showcase myself with a lot more WNBA trainers and players mm-hmm. just so I can network and build those connections. Absolutely. Nice. You know, building those connections are really important mm-hmm. you know, in this industry. We always say that even in the media, it's the same thing. You just need one person. That's all it takes. One person to yeah. see a video, one person to see your highlight that can do something for you and then just go from there. So just keep doing what you do. Keep those networks, keep those connections. Don't burn no bridges because you're going to drown otherwise. And we don't want that. Um, okay, so we're talking about your examples, your models, I guess we'll say. Um, I have two more quick questions, and then I'll let the boys have a little more fun. Um, what would be your dream one-on-one opponent be? It could be WNBA or NBA. Um, or Man, both. that's tough. Uh, a dream one-on-one, I mean, that's tough. I would I'll probably say Steph Curry and James Harden. I mean, those are the two. I'll say Harden and Curry. I would love to play against Harden and Steph. That'd be dope. And he's all, he does a lot of events out here usually. So right, yeah. Harden is actually uh, yeah. He actually uh, went to Audubon Drew. Middle School, so I think he's probably in LA. You know, a lot. He went to ASU, so he, he's probably local. California. I actually drove right? by there um, this past week mm-hmm. to um, James Harden's old high school. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but he's yeah. in the Drew a lot, isn't he? Yeah, he's in the Drew too as well, so yeah. No, he's always in the Drew. Okay, and then we're going to throw this one at you. Um, we do this to everybody. And right. yeah, he knows what uh, this is. Know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're Mount Rushmore. Here we go. Any year, any position. You can do NBA, WNBA, both, whatever you want. Okay, um, we'll go – we usually do five players because basketball five. So Mount Rushmore has four. We know we're not trying to diss on Mount Rushmore, <laughs> but five players. This is our Mount Rushmore. Our Mount Rushmore, exactly. So five players, any position, any year, go for it. 
Man, all right. Well, I'll say MJ. I didn't really grow up on MJ, but of course you got to put him in there. I, I didn't grow up. I haven't seen him play, but I know he was a great player. I got to watch more footage, also, uh, like personally, but I'll say mm -hmm. MJ, Kobe, of course. Mm -hmm. I love his game. Like I said, he's clutch. He works hard. I'll say I'll probably put Kyrie in there. Ooh, three guards. Okay. I'll put – Okay. I'll put I'll put KD. Okay, I got four. What about a big? You want to throw a big? Uh, in so there? I got MJ, Kobe, Steph, Kyrie. Uh, okay, big. So I'll say for my big man, that's tough. For my big, uh, <laughs> man, I'll say. Either Kareem or Charles Barkley or Shaq. There, oh, there's Whoa. Your Ask the question. Ask the question, Ricky. Gilbert, you can ask, ask the me. question. Or right. Dennis oh. Rodman. I mean, Dennis Rodman <laughs> plays hard. Beast too. Uh, ask her. Oh ask wow. Her. Right. I'm more guard oriented. So that's tough. That's tough. I'm guard oriented. So that's a tough question. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Go, so no. if you would have picked, so like if you would have picked Shaq, which Shaq would you um, like on your team? Which Shaq? Um, <laughs> we asked this to everybody. <laughs> everybody gets that because they always say Shaq. I mean, you're a Laker girl. I guess the early Shaq. Like, like Orlando Shaq? Orlando? Uh, or uh, <laughs> I, mean, I, I haven't seen Orlando Shaq, so I, I haven't seen Orlando Shaq, so I'm gonna go Laker Shaq. Like there you I said, go. I'm That's guarding, early for her. I'm guarding okay, guarding there you go. That answers our See, question. For my, for my big, I don't even know. I like like Equidala, but yeah, okay. I didn't even know. That's a tough question right there for a big. Yeah, it's so weird. Equidala. I look at Equidala. I don't even think of him as a big because he's so freaking right. That's what. Either. Right. But and, never, never think of him as a big. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that was tough. <laughs> yeah. I got one other out of the blue question, and then I'm gonna let the boys take over. Um, if you could play any other sport besides basketball, what would it be and why? I actually played soccer growing up, so I would say any other sport besides basketball. I'll say soccer. Soccer is great for mm -hmm. endurance, uh, really good for your footwork. And Kobe, Steve Nash, all the legends and the goats started playing soccer because it helps. It translates on the court with your footwork. You know, footwork's really big. So I'll say soccer is the, probably the next sport that I would say. Who would it's you say? Non-stop game too. Yeah, it is. Who would you right, say? Right, right. And uh, hey, I only played from seven to fourteen, so I didn't get the forty-five minute half. So I had like thirty minute half. So you know, I didn't play the hour thirty game. <laughs> <laughs> so who do you say would be your your go-to super spy for soccer? It could be man or woman. Uh, I'll say Messi. Messi. Okay. Nice. Good nice. choice. Very good choice. All right, Gilbert, what you got for me today? Since you're making this big All right, well, uh, KB, KB, we usually ask everybody who comes on to the show, and uh, you know we got to ask you, what's your all-time favorite basketball movie? Oh, he stole your thing. Oh, you stole my question. Movie. <laughs> man, <laughs> man, that's great. Uh, I like loving basketball class that, you know, grew my up together movie. with the SC. Uh, I really like Hoosier, the coach Norman mm -hmm. Dell. I like Glory Road. You know, just because Glory Road, you know, shows the racism and how an all-black team can beat an all-white team. It shouldn't matter the color of the skin. If you have talent, I'm going to put you on the court. It doesn't matter if you're mm -hmm. white or black. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play you. I want to play players who are winners, who play hard, and going to fight and put a chip on their shoulder, And you know. And they ended up beating Kentucky in Glory Road, and that was really a big move. I always watch Glory Road and Hoosiers would probably be the main two. I just – I just love those movies. Classic. <laughs> All right. And then me as the prankster of the show, I have to come in and jump in and ask you if you're ready for Space Jam 2. Are you excited? I'm definitely <laughs> ready. I'm excited. I'm actually my friend, uh, Black and Tan, Alicia, she actually mm -hmm. was in Space Jam 2. So I'm, I'm ready for Space hey. Jam. <laughs> yeah, she's Taz, man. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, we, <laughs> it's fine. I, our... I always ask that because, you know, I'm from, I was born in the 80s, 90s kid. You know, brought up on the original Space Jam, and then we get people who are like Buddha, the same era as me. And he's like, "Man, I don't want to see that crap. That was gonna be the stupidest thing ever." And then, <laughs> and one more follow up with that. We always ask people this as well. With Space Jam coming out with LeBron and whoever else he brings, which I don't even know if he's gonna bring a bunch of people because apparently there's not gonna be monsters. So I don't know if Bi has told you anything about that. I don't know if she can. 
But I know originally when the first idea came out, they wanted to have Monstars, and they were talking about bringing in Steph, then, you know, you know, Chris Paul and people like oh, yeah, that. Steph, KD, yeah. Yeah, right. it would have made sense, you know? My question to you, though, sense. my question to you, though, even being as young as you are, would you, do you think they should have done this maybe about 10 or 15 years ago with Kobe as the headliner? Definitely, man. I mean, Kobe's the GOAT. He's the, you know, legend of L.A., so I feel like that would have been awesome and just really dope and exciting just to have Kobe at that headline, mm-hmm. for sure. I agree. I, I, in my opinion, I think it would have been um, kind of sick if they would have done uh, Michael, Kobe, and then LeBron. Well, like, they, they could have right. done three movies. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I, just, I, I just think there's too much time in between, but we'll see. And now, now the B.I.'s in it, we definitely got to see it. We got, we got to support our girl, you know? Oh, yeah. For sure, no, yeah. Shout out to Black Italian. Shout yeah, out to absolutely. Black Italian. Absolutely. We're going to get her on here eventually. So we're going to get her on here very soon. That's the plan. Sounds good. So if we uh, do, I'll make sure you know about it, KK. Yeah. Oh, well, definitely. Right, I'm going to send you from now on. <laughs> yeah. Again, for you guys that are viewing right now, this is All Sports Media Team presents Double Dribble Episode 29. Dynamite comes in small packages with Kaylin Brown. This is our second of our two month um, female Hooper series, which we are super excited to get done. We have so many big names lined up right now. It's so freaking awesome. Obviously, we're going to take off next week, let people actually have Christmas with their families. But after that, we're going to return and we got some big names coming, including BI. We're going to try and get BI up in here. Um, it's going to be um, a lot of fun. Um, so back in the show, we got about thirty minutes. Um, George, this is your your this is your homegirl right here. What what do you? I know you know her. Is there anything else that you want to ask her that you might not know, or is there something you want a little story you want to tell us that she wouldn't kill you for telling? Go for it. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> all right. So for the so first of all, for my story is like I've known um, I've seen KK play on the court, so I've been to a lot of basketball beauties games. Like I've seen her numerous of times and she, she has a great shot. She's a great shooter. And she, like she mentioned, she's really quick. Um, so yeah, like, um, and then like, um, I did, I didn't get to know her until I guess, I don't remember like one, that one game when I was kind of like low key shooting around, I'm like, Hey, how you doing? Like you're a pretty good basketball player. So fast forwarding, like just last week, I was actually with her last week. Um, just shooting around, just uh, playing ball over in L.A. Like, we got to hang out last week. And then just last night, she, um, me and her went to um, 360, and I was doing all the drills. So I'm not going to lie. Like, I was kind of a little winded at first. And you got to do it. those tail sprints, George. You got to do yeah. the beach workouts. <laughs> okay, yeah. She was telling me last night. She was like, okay, okay. But, yeah, um, yeah, I will. Um, I'm not going to promise you that I'm going to be – super conditioned about it but you know it's a start <laughs> the more I do it the more reps I get in the more I'll be more comfortable and like you mentioned KK like it's all about muscle memory so I'll do that so it was actually pretty fun last night that I um, got a chance to like do those um, the shooting machines because I've never done it before like usually when I do shooting the guns right, are yeah. great yeah the guns so you are don't great. need a, you don't need a pass or a rebound exactly you know? get so, 500 yeah. shot, get 500 shots up in 30 minutes yeah so yeah so yeah like because like usually when I take shots up I have nobody to rebound for me so yeah right. so that put that really pays dividends and then yeah it was cool it was cool um only because like, I could never done it before and it was a whole different experience I wish they had one here in the valley over somewhere in San Gabriel Valley, but unfortunately they don't. Hopefully they build more locations. So yeah, that's pretty much my little story um, about um, how I knew Kaylin. Me and Kaylin have been great friends. It feels like we've known each other for a long time, only because of <laughs> our vibe and everything. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was cool. And then, oh, and then like for my question for you, KK, since you mentioned Harden a lot, <laughs> where do you where do you think Harden's gonna wind up? And is he Ooh, gonna wind up in the Seventy Sixers? Because I don't think like we we all don't see. Let's be honest, we all don't see James Harden staying in the Rockets. No. So man. where do you think, in your opinion, right. that he's gonna wind up? And man, how many days is it gonna take for him to like make a deal with them getting out of Houston? I mean, he's been with Houston for a while. I mean, I know he wants to win a championship, but like I said, you know. 
one player you can't score 30 and expect to win a championship. I'm sorry. I, I mean, not. you oh. just have to give up the ball. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. so he's been with Houston for a while. I think Brooklyn would probably not be a good fit. Honestly, he's ball dominant. He doesn't play off the ball. So, you know, you have Kyrie, you have KD. Mm-hmm. So you have two top, you know, ball dominant scorers who, who want to be the man, who want to be the show, you know? So I feel like, maybe Philadelphia or Miami. They said Miami is probably interested too. So I'll say yeah. Philadelphia or Miami, but I feel like Brooklyn would not be a good fit for Harden. Yeah. No, Miami. that's just my opinion. Miami. Yeah, I agree with you because – I'm sorry. Sorry to cut you off. No, you're good. I agree with you because, like, if you put Harden in there with Kyrie and KD, like, okay, like Kyrie and KD – Kyrie and James Harden, they have a high usage rate of the ball, so they need the ball to be more effective. Right, and right. Like ball said, dominance. Yeah. That's why my trainers say you have to work on, you know, being off the ball, coming off screens, like moving, cutting, you know, off mm-hmm. ball moving because me, I mean, I like having the ball in my hands, you know. I like making the decisions. Like when I go to these open rounds, I like being point, but I'll give it up, facilitate. But once it's time to score, like, I got to get going. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's a time where you, you know, get your teammates involved, you facilitate, and there's a time to score and take over, you know, and you work like – you put in the work to score and work on that. Like, you just got to come in with that mindset, like that Mamba mentality and just mm-hmm. attack and score. When the game's on the line, if they need you to score, you just got to score. But if you two guys or three guys on you, if you don't work on, you know, fadeaways off one leg like Kobe, and you just got to give the ball up. I mean, you just yeah. got to be unselfish and make the right play because that's what I learned. I'm unselfish. I will give up the ball. I'm not – I'm not worried about my numbers. I'm worried about my team. It's a, it's a team game. You know, you have your good games individually, but also, you know, I'm going to give up the ball. I'm going to make that extra pass. So I just feel like that's just, you know, that's my opinion, you know, on that's just your style of play and depending what your player personnel is, how do you play as a player? And that's how I feel like is the right way. You got to make the right play, right pass. Yeah, and going to your point, uh, I never thought uh, Russell Westbrook and James Harden were going to mix well because – those are two right, right. dominant players, and they have a high usage rate um, of having the ball. So I never thought it was going to work out, let alone them playing like small ball. Because, like, it'll work during the season, but when it comes to playoff time, you run into those certain teams that, um, that are pretty good of, like, um, pick, um, exposing you in the offensive end and defensive end. So, I mean, like, I really thought that, like, the Rockets were somewhat of a good team, but I didn't think it was actually going to work out in the long run. I mean, George, um, it did work a little bit in OKC, though, but that's because James Harden came off the bench, though. Exactly. Uh, Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was only because they were young. James Harden didn't come out at his own yet. So that was like that James Harden that likes to score, but he wasn't as ball dominant in OKC as he is now. Yeah. And speaking of James Harden. Oh, yeah. And speaking of James Harden, did you guys see that picture one day? He gained a lot of weight. No comment. Hey, that, hey that's that eating good, man. No working out. They're just chilling, man. Like, that's that cool <laughs> hey, he was out there. He was, eating good and not working out. Hey, he was out there in Vegas um, getting that fat Tuesday in. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was <laughs> man. having his time out there. Yeah. yeah, he was having the time of his life though, over there. And he said he was training like, you're right. Who, tra- who goes all the way to training Vegas? Training something else, training. that's for sure. But that, that's another exactly. – That's another, that's another conversation for another, for another day. Exactly. So we'll be there forever. Check into Triple B today at uh, 1230 if you guys want. No, definitely you'll get to hear some more about that. Um, I do have a couple more little questions that came to my head, uh, KK. Um, I have two questions. One, you're really, really smart. Just, just from this last 40 minutes and me getting to talk to you a couple times this week, I know that you're very knowledgeable. I can see that you like to – you people watch, first of all. Um, you think, um, I, like you just think ahead. Um, you're very intellectual as well. My question is, would you ever be interested or have you already ever, um, done coaching? Yeah, I'm actually very interested in coaching, you know, and after all the coaches I've had and I dealt with politics, like over, you know, like in high school, they said I was a ball hug. So it's like, it's like, and it's so funny because a lot of players are like, or coaches, some people be like, oh, you're too unselfish. You need a score. You need a score. So it's like, I just had coaches were in my ear. And I feel like as I got older, like, I just know what to do and what not to do as a coach. So I feel like that was just, you know, a little confusing. But, you know, but yeah. If you were to coach, what level would you want to coach? Like, would you feel the most comfortable coaching? 
uh, I want to coach college. I, I want to be a college coach. And eventually I want to be a, you know, pro coach, NBA, WNBA, because actually Lindsey Harding, uh, like a lot of women are actually starting to be NBA coaches. Like, like the player development for the Sacramento Kings. Hashtag sign Becky, Becky Hammond. <laughs> so we have, we have, we have a lot of, you know, women being involved in coaching and NBA players are respecting and listening to them because as the game grows, you know, there needs to be more women mm -hmm. trainers and coaching. So that's what I want to do. I want to coach, but I also want to get into training. So I want to train mm -hmm. little kids to okay. work on their fundamentals, their handles, their shot, and just like have a mentorship program to just talk to them. Or, you, you know, God is good, you know, regardless of, you know, regardless of the politics, regardless of all the negative. Mm -hmm. Come on. Coach, but a trainer as well. Women empowerment. Yeah, women <laughs> empowerment. It kind of cut out a little bit, but I did catch what you what you were saying. So I totally agree with you. I love the fact that you want to help out the kids and but you also want to reach for your your goal. You know, I could totally see you doing something like that. And there's like you said, there's so many former WNBA players out there that could take an NBA team and no problem we talked we back Becky on this show like crazy. Oh, yeah. I mean, she got the Spurs to the summer league championship I mean Becky yeah, they were beast. <laughs> but you think of other names Lisa Leslie yeah. could do it you know if Teresa came back she could do it Sue Bird could do it you know there's so many uh right. Tarasi, when oh. she retires are you kidding me she would kill you know it, it would be pretty <laughs> cool it would be cool to see it's gonna happen just imagine I think Becky's gonna be the first one so if you yeah, it, yeah, it's definitely going to happen. Yeah, Becky's going to do it. She learned from Greg Popovich, so. Yeah, she's the goat. He the goat. He the goat. He the goat. And that's coming from Lakers. Right. He the goat. He the goat. He the goat. He the he goat. goat. You know? so, um, also, I was going to say reading. Uh, reading is also important. Like, I read a lot of books. So, like, Kobe's books. I listen to his motivational uh, videos on YouTube. I read a lot of, like, Coach K, you know, just mm -hmm. mental toughness books and just just to, you know, overcome, like I said, those obstacles, because, you know, when you feel down, you feel like not working out, you're being overlooked by players, you know, you're more talented in, but like I said, you just keep working and keep working. Like, like you can't settle for just being good. You know, I'm a good player and I want to be great. So there's things I can work on. So I just worry about, like I said, I, even though I keep going back to work ethic, that's, that's my number one thing in character, character also as well, because John Wooden is greatest at UCLA one, man, like 12 plus championships I don't even know by heart how many championships but he, John Wooden is great you know pyramid of success so mm -hmm. and you know it's it's not even just about physical it's about mental just being mentally tough so just not letting anybody get to you mentally so like I said just reading those mental toughness books and Eric Thomas is a really you know inspirational guy for me Eric Thomas is one of the best hip-hop motivational speakers so before games before practice I always just turn in like tune in and turn on YouTube and I really listen to him because that's really what makes me tougher and just helps me go and just helps me just mm -hmm. keep rising the mountain just keep climbing and getting to the top I know it's really difficult to envision this right now with everything that's going on with the pandemic and all I don't know if I went overboard but <laughs> no you're all good um <laughs> would you consider seeing yourself as a professional motivational speaker or at least do motivational speaking I know you do a lot of charity events so maybe I think so I could she totally will. see you doing that, especially um, with like. Yeah, I, I want to do community events. Yeah, being a motivational speaker, I don't know. I'll do a lot of, you know, speeches at, you know, different schools. But as opposed to motivational speaker, I just feel like being in the WNBA is probably going to be enough, you know. So, but of course, I'm going to still do, I want to do the mentorship for the after sport programs for kids and do these toy drives and mm -hmm. food drives, you know, just like how today, you know, it's. It's great. You know, a lot of people are here with their, you know, parents and with their little kids, picking up kids and toys and food. And we have the hoop bus, the Venice Beach, aka Venice uh, Beach hoop, hoop bus out here and just having a good time seeing the kids. And, you know, so just giving back, like I said, I'll do a lot of these events just because it's more than basketball. You know, your character takes you a long way and you want to you want to be a good person. You want to be humble and be a great person because character takes you more. You can be a great player, but if, you know, 
if you have a high ego and if you don't really give back to the kid, if you just think, oh, I'm an NBA player, you know, I'm a WNBA player, you know, I'm all that, I'm I'm this and that, I'm this and that, I got a Mercedes Benz, I got a, you know, I live by the beach. It's like, mm -hmm. you living good, but it's like at the end of the day, if you're not doing community events for the kids, you're not really, you know, you're not, you're not trying to reach your full potential. Absolutely. And then it's more than that too, because it's like, like you said, it's like, it's about you trying to make yourself be better. Like those um, material things like that you mentioned doesn't really matter. Like what matters is you try to be better. You try to reach the top. You try to be hard nosed and you got to try to coach yourself up. Like you said. So it's just all about like the, the that it's about who you are and not mm -hmm. what you are. And we actually, right, right. You, your reputation, right. Absolutely. Exactly. We talked about, about who you this. Are. Was it last, with T last week? We talked about this, I believe. Um, there's that. There's always that one athlete, or you know, that one person that you're always going to remember. You know, me personally, it was a wrestler. You know, I was 12 years old and going through LAX, and I ran into the late great Yokozuna. You know, you can't miss Yokozuna, bro. With 641 pounds. You know, but you know, he stopped. He stopped going to wherever he was. He was just getting off the plane, I think. And his brother told him that I was a fan, and he literally. Stopped where he was going, went with me, sat down, and talked with me for like 20 minutes, just, just talking about wrestling in general. And I'll never forget that. I'm 36, you know, or the fact that someone will just take a second. Mike Trout, every single game. I work at Angel Stadium also. Mike Trout, every game comes out and signs at least like 20 or 30 balls. Just All right, that's cut, what I was going to you know? ask you. Who do you look up to in baseball? You know, what position are you – what got you into um, in baseball as well, me, Ooh, Ricky. I don't play well. I don't play anymore. <laughs> I played, okay, I played baseball from age five to age eighteen, and then I played adult ball for a little bit. Um, but I would say older era, I'd say Cal Ripken Jr. because of his consistency and the fact that his dedication, um, and that he played shortstop and got his butt kicked every single freaking game. See, yeah, I don't even stuff. know who that is. I need to start See, watching more baseball, up. too. But let, let, me, let me, I'll help well, you out. Well, you He's go, a, you he go. was the 80s, 90s version of Derek Jeter. Derek oh. Jeter, DJ did everything clean. He And he was a Yankee, and I'm an Angel fan. And I'm sorry, I don't like the Yankees, but DJ. Oh, you don't like the Dodgers? You an Angel guy? I'm a, I work in Angel Stadium. I've been an Angel <laughs> for my whole life. I respect the Dodgers, though. <laughs> I know my history. Vince Scully's the GOAT. You know, he's my broadcasting, my broadcasting idol. Okay, he okay. lives yeah. closer to Orange County, so that's why he's. I'm in the middle, bro. I'm 20 and 20, man. <laughs> no, 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 don't, don't listen to him. I'm 20 and 20. I'm 20 to Anaheim, 20 to LA. So it's just, I've always been an Angel fan, but I love, I like Dodgers. I like Bellinger. I respect the hell out of Bellinger ever since freaking Little League World Series. You know, he's way better than his dad was. His dad used to play for the Yankees, Clay Bellinger. Uh, he's yes, yo, please. Yes, he'll play. Okay, he's oh gosh, he just signed with someone. I can't remember. I who. think he's signed with Cincinnati Reds, right? Yeah, it, no, oh, yeah. He, I think he's going somewhere else. Like, cause he oh, was with the Reds. He was with the Reds. But oh, my point, I he said, who are my idols? I would say Ripken, and then it would be DJ, and then everyone's like, oh, you you pick Mike Trout, you pick Mike Trout, you know. <laughs> I would say for the younger generation, Mike Trout is a great example because, like you said, he, he does everything you do. He's a hard worker. He goes above and beyond, but he doesn't forget where he came from, and he doesn't forget the kids. He does all the charity he can, and he's always – he does it clean. You know, we, we talk about the Houston – we don't like the Houston Astros here. Sorry, Astros. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. We don't like so the Astros. You're talking about the cheaters? The, the, like the, the, the Houston Asterix. So, we don't like them. I used to love Springer, and I used to love Altuve. And then they pulled the crap with that – well, obviously cheating in 2017 and 18 – or 2017. And then that BS apology that they came out with. The next they should year. have been banned. And no, they should have been strapped with their championship, in my done, opinion. Done. Yeah, that's it again. Another show, another day. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would say. Oh, and also, man, before we close up soon, I know no, you, get, I, I, you have to give up. Yeah, you got to give some support, you know, and shout out to my mom. She does a lot for me. Moms. She takes me to the gym. Yeah, mom takes me to the gym every day. Mostly or, or she'll Uber me because if she doesn't want to go, she'll Uber me. I do whatever I do just mm -hmm. to get to my trainings ever since, you know, I was a little kid because. My dad didn't do much so growing up, so, you know, she always took me out Uber, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I got to get to the gym. I got to get to the gym. She's like, don't Uber, don't Uber, take the bus. But <laughs> yeah. but my dad also helps me, like, the financial part. Even though he wasn't in my life physically, 
And financially, my dad pays for everything. My dad will pay for okay. school. My dad pays for everything. He pays for my tournaments. He pays for my gear. He pays for everything. So even though he's not there physically, which he should be, he's paying for stuff. So financially, mm-hmm. one way or the other. So. Partly there, yeah. But even though it's good also for a father to be in their daughter's life physically, but that just makes me go harder. So mm-hmm. when I go to the WNBA and when I get all these accolades and when I achieve all these goals that I know I'm going to do and I know I can get, I'm just going to, you know, be thankful for the trainers that were by my side, my mom, and just the coaches who believed in me. I really, just those people who are really, you know, believed in me with my skill and work and you know I can get to the top I'm really you know thankful and appreciate you know those people hey Kaylin when you do end yeah, up yeah. getting into the WNBA you think uh me and Ricky George could get some dirties <laughs> I'm a large yeah okay, like yeah. I want to get them cake of course, jerseys. Uh, plug. Of course man you with guys the need autograph seats, man. Hey, hey. Boxy, hey. baby hell yeah, yeah. Boxy, the seats, the baby bench, I got you guys that's what I'm talking about um, okay, we got, like you said, we have about eight-ish minutes. We usually go a little over, which is fine. I got one more question, and then we'll do what's called the roundabout. There's only three of us, so it won't take that long. Uh, my last question, which I always ask towards the end, after everything you've been through, whether it's basketball life, whatever it is, when you go to hang up your shoes, what legacy do you want to leave? When I'm done playing, like, like I said, I want to be one of the greatest female, you know, college player at my school you know and I want to be one of the greatest WNBA player just you know after Tarasi after the Candace Parkers I want to be the best player I can be you know the best WNBA player best college player you know at my school and just also a good person so they know me not as just you know you're a great player but you're a good person you give back and you're always in the gym you're a gym rat so that's just what I want to leave my legacy to kids just the people who look up to me you know like I said just good you know, good heart, good, kind, genuine heart, a great work ethic, and be mentally tough, go to the right schools, you know, don't care about the politics and just overcome those, be strong, and just, that's what I want to leave when, I, like, like how Kobe did when he left his shoes, he, he coached his daughter, he, he gave back to the community, he wrote books, so he did a lot more than just basketball, which is, which is really great. Which is funny, or not funny, haha, but like awesome funny, because his movie was called More Than Basketball. You know, right. so Grammy or, or what is it, uh, Oscar award winning uh, more than basketball. Just saying, putting it out there. Um, okay, cool. We got about five minutes. It's been fun. It's been really cool to see. I You got that smile, that infectious smile. You know, you're really funny. You're really cool. You're a hell of a hard worker. Like, we can get that just by talking to you. We don't even have to see your videos, which you guys should go see her videos. Go on her Instagram at underscore KK gets buckets on Instagram. Check it out. Or you can go on our YouTube, youtube.com, all sports media team. We got highlights there as well. So make sure you check them out. Um, if you know anybody in the industry, send them the video. Um, my final, final, this is like our Jerry Springer final thought, but my final <laughs> question for you is, again, this kind of has to go with the legacy thing. After going through, you know, you said your dad wasn't around that much. Um, and, you know, being, you know, a shorter in stature baller and being a female baller, what have you, it's actually a two-parter, what have you endured in your, your path and what have you learned that you can both use on the court and in life? Uh, it just goes back to the character. I, I learned that, like I said, you know, you don't want to always feel I'm good, I'm good, I'm great, mm-hmm. I'm great. You always want to take advice and advice to those who know what they're talking advice just good advice who's players who's been there so who's been at the WNBA it's just people who are positive and who are telling you the right information and the right advice because you know anybody can just talk and talk to get you to their school like a lot of coaches will say mm-hmm. oh I was out of shape I was big like, I had the skill but I, uh, I was out of shape like oh like you know make I'm short like making these excuses so it's like I just worked even harder. And, you know, I lost weight this past summer. Like, even a few years ago, I was just really big on conditioning and lifting weights, getting stronger, you know, being a strong guard so I can get them off me. And I've really got stronger and leaned out a lot, lost a lot of weight. And, like, it's still, like, that wasn't the excuse. So, you know, that wasn't even the excuse. So now it's, like, people didn't, uh, you know, understand. They're misunderstanding. I'm always in the gym. I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to go to a friend's house. I didn't want to go to a party. I didn't want to you know, hang out. I just thought about, I was always about getting in the gym, working out. So 
you know, if people didn't want to work out, you know, they didn't understand me. They did, they hung out and I just got more hours in the gym. So just like how what Kobe did, that's what I try to do. You know, I don't do the four or five days, but I'll do two, three days, you know, I'm, a, I'm my body's different than Kobe a man. So, you know, but I just Everybody's didn't want to, it's not all like, like, it's not about, <laughs> it's not going, it's not all about going to the movies or, you know, like having 30,000 followers on Instagram. Like, cause I don't care about the crowd. A lot of the media try to hype up people on Instagram and mm-hmm. stuff like if you're a good player, you're a good player. You should respect them no matter what. It doesn't matter if you have five followers or 50,000. Like, it's not about you're a top ESPN player, like, because there's players who are just as good and better than those ESPN players that you see that play better, like, have a better career in college, honestly, instead of the players at a top school and they're not even producing, putting numbers up. They're just, you know, they're just there to say they're there. And, you know, I want to produce numbers and I want to lead the University of St. Mary's to a St. Ch- uh, to a state championship and, I want to lead St. Mary, you know, to just be a winning school and, you know, get these winning team, not just team goals, individual goals, everything, you know, Coach Brett Schneider, you know, he was at Texas Tech, so I feel like my head coach, you know, he knows I've been working, so he he didn't even recruit me, but the fact I was knowledgeable and I researched about certain coaches, you know, because I was underrated, so I was like, his brother's at KU, you know, he knows Jeff Walsh from Louisville, right. I know Beth Burns, I know the Louisville, like, and Louisville is a top school in the country so you know like there's no better way you know to leave your legacy so I was like play two years for Brett Schneider work hard because I know he's going to push me I already know this coach is going to push me and Mm -hmm. he wants the best for me so I'm just looking forward you know just producing and scoring and helping my team win the championship and just pushing my younger players the freshmen and just pushing them each Mm -hmm. day in practice because I know a few of them are already looking up to me so it's like I just want to make sure they reach their Full potential and they do what they got to do just to get better every year because you don't want to be the same mm-hmm. uh, you want to try to work on something each year specifically and get better at it you want to mm-hmm. like each year you're supposed to be progressing and getting better you don't want to stay the same player so that's why you you not only need to push yourself but I feel like if I had teammates in high school that pushed me or were better than me or just as good it would have been easier because they would they would have really pushed me and I feel like I had to push myself so now I'm really going to push the younger players Mm-hmm. So that they can see what it really takes to, you know, be great or be good. Like you don't want to just settle for being okay. Cause there's so much more that you can get better at handles, passing defense, mm-hmm. you know, IQ, yeah. studying the game film. It's, there's so much more, you know, so you can't just focus on, Oh, I'm good. Like I said, you, you there's always room for improvement. There's always room to get better. Mm-hmm. So that's what I would just say. And that's good that you're like that because like you said, there's a lot of players out there that won't take that extra step that won't help that person. Cause they're afraid that they're going to take their spot. So I think that's awesome that you do that. Um, George, you know we're what's crazy about time. all that? What's that? Sorry. It's your turn, by the way. <laughs> She's the youngest guest that we ever had that speaks yep. like an adult. Yeah, she does. More yeah, than an so adult. She's got I've cool. known that firsthand, so that's what I like about um, KK, and that's how we became like great friends. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so final question? Final question. All right, so my final question is, are we going to um, shoot like a little short film or something? Because like you talk <laughs> like you could like, you know, just, <laughs> you just have you like your own 30 for 30 of, ESPN. It's a lot of reading. So I just try to do a lot of reading, and, you know, so I feel like a lot of reading, I just gain more knowledge and I appreciate it. Just try to talk with respect in class. Like, mm-hmm. so I try to carry 30 myself. for 30 coming soon, guys. Make it, make it happen. <laughs> yeah. We'll copyright it. All 30 for 30. Oh. Exclusive. Oh, right, y'all know I'll make it happen. Y'all know I'll make it Let's happen. Let's do it. It's make it exclusive. Let's get it out there. We'll send it on. We'll just post You'll it on be in it, Ricky. You'll be we'll in it. Tag ESPN. Tag Fox Sports. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get Joe Buck out of there. Dude, bro, bro. bro. <laughs> Joe Buck. That's all I'm going to say. Go. All right, Gilbert, you're a big returning person. Uh, what you got for me, dude? We close this out. Yes. Uh, Kaylin, so with the whole pandemic going on right now, I know it's been hard on everybody, but um, how do you plan to keep pushing yourself? I know gyms are closed right now, but how do you plan to just keep working on your game? Man, for me, we lost her. Oh, we lost her. Bring her back. Bring her back. Well, until she comes what did back, I do? it's all right. It happens. Until she comes back, um, we can talk about. Maybe her phone died. Oh, God, I hope not. Let me see. Da, da, da. Let me message her real quick. Anyways, you guys. Um, so she was awesome, first of all. 
Mm-hmm. Um, she's a great example from what I see. And for all you, especially young ladies out there that are listening to this, take her advice and don't be afraid to move forward and don't be afraid to humble yourself and help out others in the process. So, I mean, Gilbert, from hearing all... the interview today, what did you take from KK? Oh, man, she's just great overall. Her, um, the way she carries herself, like, for her age to just carry herself like that, um, hard work, it's great. I see nothing but great things for her in the future. She's going to do great. Yeah. Let's see if Coach wants to chime in really quick. Hey, hey Coach Don. He's the only one who's allowed to use KK. that logo. We, we don't, we're not allowed to use that logo. Uh, coach, so he can use it. Yeah, I can get- you're I can use it. Um, not nah, good job, y'all. I what I listen to. We're still, yeah, we're still. Um, so what yeah, do you she, think? From what you heard, her and uh, her and Georgia are a great combo. So they got they could do some stuff in the future for sure. Yeah, it's made it happen. Um, but yeah, she's yeah. definitely a coach. She's a coach in the making for sure, like no doubt. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. Yeah, what do you she, think, George? She's your friend, but from all the extra stuff that you heard, what 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 do you think? No, she um she has a very bright future um and by the way she's speaking because she believes in like hard work pays off like no matter what no matter is if it's basketball soccer or life you know like it just goes to show you that um we're we could always be better at something there's always room for improvement there's always that learning curve that we have because like like we're not perfect people we don't have everything all together. That's why we have to work harder every day. That's why we have to, you know, just do certain things um, for us to get there. Mm-hmm. But we're, all, we're not always going to be perfect people, but we could strive to perfection. Absolutely. I love, I, I personally love the intellectual aspect that she took. Before you, mm-hmm. shout out. Um, yeah, that's why I brought her uh, in because, like, I know she would be a great. Um, yeah. One of the, no, it was totally, totally worth it, dude. She was awesome. Um, yeah. It looks like. She's not coming back. Beauty of technology. Hashtag 2020 technology. Uh, but it was a great show. So I want to say thank you so much to Kaylin Brown, a.k.a. at underscore KK Gets Buckets on Instagram. Check her out. Also, YouTube.com. All Sports Media Team. We got her highlights up there. We'll also have the show up there at 3 o'clock today. So make sure you guys check that out. It will be premiering at 3 o'clock. Um, welcome back to Gilbert. We missed you, brother. We're glad that things are going good for you, and it's awesome to have you back. So continue prayer for you, me, sir. Um, Coach, thank you. He's busy. He's a busy man today, so we'll let him do his thing. George, thank you for bringing KK because she saved our butts again, man. You, you, mm-hmm. Someone always steps up, man, and that's so cool about this sport. We always find someone to step up. So – with that said, um, conspicuous by her absence, uh, Kaylin Brown, due to technology, has uh, fell off. But again, check her out at underscore KK Gets Buckets, um, Basketball Beauties League, um, University of St. Mary's. What else we got? Um, M- WNBA very shortly. Keep an ear out for Kaylin Brown because it's going to happen. I want to say thanks to my dude, George Chola, my dude, Gilbert A. Placencio. We got the coach down there as well. You guys, the holidays are coming, so no show next week. Enjoy being with your family. Take a break. Two weeks, we come back, and we continue our series with female hoopers, and we got a lot of names lined up, and we'll see who steps up to the plate, you know, and we'll see who makes that yeah, that shot and comes and helps us out. It's going to be cool. So have an amazing rest of your day. If you guys are going to stick around in a couple hours for a Triple B 2.0, we got a grip of stuff coming your way. Me and George and G are ready to bring that to you. And we also got, you know, NBA starting on Tuesday. So we got a lot to talk about. So make sure you check it out. Again, this show will be airing on YouTube.com, All Sports Media Team at 3 p.m. So make sure you check it out. Have a great rest of your weekend. Stay safe. Keep those masks on and have a great rest of your weekend. And, you know, happy holidays. And you guys are cool. Peace out.